So thank you all for being there, uh, especially at lunchtime. So it's really courageous for, for you to, to listen to me. So yeah, uh, as I've just been told you, uh, I'm here to share my experience about 10 years in LoA1 deployments. You can see that I have some gray hair, and so uh, I started in that domain at the very beginning, so I can share my experience and also share my view for the future. So I will go quite rapidly on this one because you can find the story of LoA1 almost everywhere uh, on the web and uh, you know, with many, many materials about that. Uh, in 2013, we, in Kerlink, we started to, uh, to uh, design and manufacture the first gateway uh, and we uh, worked very closely with a, a company named Cicleo at the very beginning that was be being bought by, the, by Semtech. Um, and so uh, uh, we delivered the first gateway to these young people, uh, you can re maybe recognize them, Vinke and, and Johan, uh, in 20, 10 years ago. So if you, if you didn't know this picture, so there, this is Vinke and, and Johan when they were a little bit younger. And uh, the first gateway was just looking like this one, you can see uh, on this picture. Uh, after that, two years after that, in 2015, uh, uh, the Alliance has been funded uh, with a, a group of companies you recognize here again. And so I'm very proud in Kerning, uh, having been uh, in that, in that uh, first, uh, first step. Um, the first specification of the LoRa one uh, itself uh, was issued, well, there, are, there were a lot of works between 2015 and 17, but the, the final version, or the first version, was delivered in 2017, and now, 10 years later, or 2023, uh, we are now uh, 20, uh, sorry, uh, 200 million devices connected in LoRa one uh, and uh, we have uh, a lot of members in the LoRa Alliance, uh, hundreds of, of members, and the growth uh, is, uh, is here. Um, this morning, Vinke uh, showed a picture of, of the number of messages and devices connected to the TTI that demonstrate that the growth is definitively here. So, uh, to dig a little bit deeper in, uh, in this history, uh, I, have, I have identified three phases. The first one uh, about the deployments around 2015 was cellular-centric. That means that it was driven by uh, early adopters of Flora One in the famous carrier grade uh, or carriers uh, like, like Telco, like uh, Orange, Proximus, KPN, uh, Bwig, and also Tata Communications in, in India. So these people have adopted uh, the Flora One uh, uh, as a star topology for, the, for their network. Uh, they define uh, what they used to see in that domain, like the roaming aspects uh, uh, for, for their own, uh, own need. Um, the business model was based uh, on, once again, what the telco used to sell uh, at the end. That means connectivity, uh, but let's say connectivity only at that stage. And uh, it was not really driven by use case. The idea, I will come back on that later on, is um, that we color the map, we cover, uh, we, we deploy almost everywhere in the country, and after that, we will see. That was, let's say, the, the first, uh, first idea. But the beauty of that for gateway manufacturer like me is that it was really big rollouts. Uh, uh, for example, with Orange, we have deployed more than 4,000 killing gateways for them, and uh, so that's very significant business. Four years later, around 2019, uh, um, the market and the business has moved a little bit. Um, it has been driven more by the data and the applications themselves uh, uh, for companies who provide services. That is not the case uh, of, the, of the telcos. Um, the focus was more based on the coverage extension and uh, especially for private deployments. That means coverage where the uh, user needs to have a coverage. Uh, no really roaming aspects uh, it was not the key at, at that time. Uh, and the topology of the network is more like a silo, you know, just for one application and one usage of the, of the network. Uh, at the opposite of the telco uh, um, deployment that is more agnostic in terms of application and number of devices or type of devices to, to connect. 
Um, the new business model has, al has also um, uh, did an evolution as well, uh, and th this is not especially driven by the, by the devices themselves, but more uh, the cost for the network or itself or uh, as an access point, uh, there was this kind of business model. And so here in 2019, we really started to have significant deployment in the domain of smart cities uh, and, uh, and smart buildings. Next step is 2021, uh, so after uh, COVID crisis, uh, uh, or just, just uh, at the end, um, the market became more industrial centric. That means, in my, in my mind, that uh, the, market, the, the one who really drives the market are more uh, companies who work in a special domain like metering, energy, industrial IoT. This is the kind of company that generally drives the market today. Of course, there are some exceptions. I don't want to, to uh, frustrate anyone in that, in that, uh, in that room. Uh, but globally speaking, this is, uh, these are the companies who drive the market today. Um, the focus uh, is still on the uh, extension of the network for the uh, place where uh, the company really needs the network to, to be used. Um, and uh, of course, we speak here about private deployment, a deployment for a company who needs to use uh, the data for its own uh, business. The performances, well, the focus is on the performances itself and what is quite new and absolutely mandatory, that is, uh, um, there is more focus on the budget along the project. Not only year one or, or even the six first months, but more on the five years project because you know that when we, you deploy, uh, let's say, a, a professional network, this is for five to ten years. And so the, there are more topics today to, uh, to uh, to solve more challenges uh, around the TCO, that is the uh, total cost of ownership, uh, the, the budget. Um, plug and play network, uh, it was, Laurent was a little bit too over engineering, uh, engineered. Uh, we have to consider that Laurent network is now adopted, I will come back on that, and uh, um, you need to facilitate the, li the life of the user when adopting such a Laurent network. So there are more challenges on this one uh, today. And once again, the business model remains a little bit the same than previously uh, on, on the services. So the kind of company we can uh, clearly uh, see in that domain are water, water metering company uh, and, this, and industrial maintenance. So about the success of these 10 years. Uh, clearly, uh, the picture today is significantly different than the one 10 years ago. When I was doing my first meetings 10 years ago, speaking about LoRaWAN, uh, well, no one was knowing LoRaWAN. I, I had really to evangelize uh, the customers. Everyone was, was speaking about Sigfox, uh, about, uh, about cellular technologies, but LoRaWAN, it was absolutely uh, not known at all. And today, uh, uh, LoRaWAN has been really adopted as the main, let's say, uh, um, uh, LP1 technology available. And this is even the only uh, LP1 technology that is really uh, uh, alive and, and, uh, and uh, available on the market today. Uh, the success comes also of the million of devices connected, I, I, I already told you. Um, and for, for, for years, I mean, the devices, the devices sorry, uh, that are installed today are there for, for, for some years. Okay. The alliance is very uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, the alliance also is very strong. The Laura alliance is very strong uh, uh, with major companies inside. So this is absolutely crucial and, and key. Um, the technology is mature. Uh, there is a lot of performance. No one comes back on this. There is no real debate about the performance of Laura One anymore, as uh, we were facing uh, even five years ago. Um, the security, it was something that was a challenge at the beginning. Everyone say, was, was saying, okay, but this is not secure technology and so on. And this is not the case anymore. I, have, I don't have any question anymore about that. I think it has been demonstrated that this technology is safe uh, on, on that point. The TCO, the budget for Laura one is, of course, a very low cost, as you know already. Um, there is 
private installations, that means direct to the, to the application, and it's really adapted for, for that one. Um, and this approach is really closer than the Wi-Fi installation in, uh, on a site than uh, anything else like, uh, like a cellular technology. There are some also connection with some other protocols uh, that are uh, also ongoing and that is promising for the future. The failures, so I always put a, a kitty because it's always good to put a kitty in a presentation. And this is a, my, my specialty, sorry. Uh, um, the failure, so, sorry for the, for the word. Maybe uh, some of you will uh, find it a little bit too strong. Um, of course, it needs to be mitigated a little bit, but this is what we could see from, uh, from the past. Um, as you saw, the first specification and the first players who adopted LoRa uh, were big telcos. So when they entered in that domain, they also came with all the methodology and process they were knowing and uh, uh, familiar with. And so this is especially why uh, in the uh, specification we have what I call a depth, a technical depth, because they have brought some kind of complexity as well coming from 3GPP-like, let's say, requirements. So uh, today we still have this complexity in some of the specification of LoRaWAN. Uh, that, uh, that is sometimes difficult to manage. Uh, we are not still at the real internet, at the device level as well. Uh, today, LoRaWAN allows to connect a device on internet at the end, but at the device level, the protocols are not still uh, IP-like. IP so six low pan or such technologies are not uh, clearly adopted as, uh, as part of the, of the possible technology uh, uh, with LoRaWAN. We are still have competition uh, with some protocols, uh, legacy protocols like WMBus and Wison, so uh, LoRaWAN is not hegemonic, but okay. Um, and so once again, coming back on the, on the failures, let's say, uh, uh, the fact that the telcos covered first step uh, uh, all the territories and without uh, uh, any, uh, any uh, use case, it led to some challenges because uh, people witnesses that, uh, saying, okay, but Laura one, well, there is no use case, no, no ROI on the network because uh, the, this is not profitable for the telcos. And so that's, that's a problem because uh, finally it impacted all the chain, all the other players. And that's a, that's a problem at the opposite for those who deployed a private network that are more profitable and who have a return on the invest uh, today that is proven. Um, business model is based on device still today. Uh, a lot of uh, KPIs and a way to, uh, to uh, invoice finally the network is based on the device and this is still an issue for the scalability because at one point uh, it will lead to a very high budget that are not compatible with many business models. And for Laura Alliance, okay, we are very good players inside, but we still miss uh, the user. Oh, there are a few, but not so much, so not so many. And so we uh, need uh, to have users and also uh, public authorities participating to the Laura Alliance uh, to have the full page, the full coverage uh, of, uh, of the players. So risk and opportunities, um, the risk is about the competition. Of course, you have heard about NB-IoT or, or some technology, cellular technologies. We can compete with LoRaWAN. Uh, that's a risk for LoRaWAN. Uh, you have also uh, some vertical uh, protocols or technologies like MyOT or Wison that also appear uh, that pretend to compete with, uh, with or against uh, LoRaWAN. You can see also the, uh, the, new, uh, yeah, the, the new technologies coming from satellites, a kind of uh, expansion of the satellites uh, uh, with many uh, LEO or constellation uh, appearing that will bring the device directly to the, to the satellite and, and will provide another way to connect devices. And finally, also one of the risks is also still linked to the budget. Uh, the, Temptation that uh, uh, to deploy a low cost, uh, a low cost uh, network, and this is a risk because at the end it impacts the picture and, uh, and the reputation of LoRaWAN in case of issues with maintenance or robustness of the of the of the, of the network. 
But it, these are the same for opportunities because cellular, they are still uh, not use case oriented like at the beginning. So for the private LoRa one, this is not a big deal. Uh, for the vertical uh, uh, technologies, Okay, it's the same, but the debates are more on technical aspects and on a very tight part of the technical aspects. And I, I would like to say, well, who cares exactly about, about that? Uh, the, the main thing is to answer a, a, a user or a need uh, on this, so it's not, uh, not key. And the satellites, I see that as a, also an opportunity. We can do a, kind, a good combination between LoRaWAN and satellite. You had an example this morning again in the keynote from, uh, from uh, uh, TTI, demonstrating that there is a good, uh, a good com uh, complementary uh, things to do with, uh, with the satellites as well. And opportunities that, yeah, uh, there are many players, good players, in the domain of, uh, of, uh, um, of the gateways, uh, like uh, uh, Multitech, TechTelic, Carelink, we are uh, career-grade companies who provide very good, uh, very good solutions. So the challenge for the ne ne 10 next years, this is my, my last minute, I believe. Um, so um, we need to reinforce the alliance uh, and to, uh, to be an industrial alliance. Uh, more oriented on the model of Bluetooth or Wi-Fi uh, alliances. Um, we need to focus on a rollout uh, uh, with good ROI and uh, not really covering the, the rate of coverage. Um, we need to focus on use case suitable for lower one, uh, like smart building cities, and do not waste our time on some other use, use case that we can leave to NB-IoT, we can leave to satellites or whatever. Uh, edge computing is key for the future as well. I believe that we need to save some resources in terms of backhauling, so it's true for satellite, but not only. Um, it must, Laura one must be supervised network uh, to propose the highest quality. Uh, this is key, once again, not to do some compromise on the, on the initial setup of the network. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, security, internet protocols, uh, I mentioned earlier, are also uh, things we need to uh, develop for the, for the future. And maybe also like technology like LLR, FHSS, sorry for the pronunciation, it's so complex to say, uh, uh, for satellite that can be also a complementing, uh, complementary offer. So, yeah, the topic is that in 10 years from now, LoRaWAN one must be considered as a commodity uh, like the Wi-Fi today. And that's it.